Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, welcome to this today's webinar, which is called The Power of Silent Learners in a Group. And this is a, a question that I think uh, awakes a lot of interest and uh, something we'd like to share with you and some we'd like to get your ideas. Uh, this webinar is Anyway, a joint production, uh, the EDEN, the European Distance and E-Learning Network, together with the uh, Nordic Network for Adult Education, NVL, the Swedish Network for IT and Higher Education, ITHU, and the Dutch Webinar.nl. Uh, and today we're going to hopefully get lots of participation out of you. We want to discuss the question of those learners who maybe don't want to take part in group work, who find uh, who find the problems in the collaboration sometimes, who actually want to do it on their own and need space, they need time, they need to reflect, they work best like that. They're not against a bit of social contact, it's nothing to do with that, it's simply that when I'm studying I want to concentrate and I need to concentrate and I need space. So we want to discuss that and about how we work in uh, groups. With me today, some guests. First of all, Jan Willem. Hi Alistair, I shall introduce my, myself briefly. Uh, my name is Jan Willem, Jan Willem Kemper. I'm a tax consultant, but I'm also a teacher or a trainer. Um, I give courses to my uh, fellow tax advisors to um, keep them up to date with the new regulations and new de developments. Okay, and uh, you like to be out on the sea, and uh, I, qu I quite like the sea too, since I've always lived beside the sea, and uh, especially seabirds are an interest of mine. Uh, there's a bit, for, bit of my home, home in Scotland there. I'm an e-learning specialist at Linnaeus University, and uh, in terms of learning, I th I'm probably rather noisy, though I can be quiet now and again to everyone's relief. So uh, let's see how we go this time. Francisca. Thank you, Alistair. And I'm also a noisy learner. I'm an, uh, also an entrepreneur at xwebinar.nl. And um, I help organizations with online co collaboration. And I am very extrovert. And I love a cafe-style interaction always. Uh, but I like to have a leader who is an introvert, because I discovered the power of introverts already since, since 15 years, and that's why I'm here. And I learned to collab collaborate with them, and um, I needed a lot of, of patience, but it was worth it. I learned it from Jan Willem, he's also Dutch, he lives in my town, and he was one uh, who could manage big problems in the sailing club by Staying cool, staying cool, making great analysis of the situation, and he was um, pre prejudiced. So I learned these things also in the course called Human Dynamics, the same course as Jan Willem, 15 years ago, but I use this knowledge every day. Later on in the webinar, I will tell you uh, some experience um, in, the, in a PBL group. So what brings you here? What about you? Uh, we want you to, uh, this is a very participatory webinar because we would like, we're going to continually ask you to contribute in the chat uh, and in various poll questions. So we're going to be throwing questions backwards and forwards. So please keep the fingers at your keyboards. The question is, why are you here? <clears throat> what do you want to discover? What are you interested in finding out in terms of silent learners? Could you just <clears throat> type a little bit here and let's see, what do you think? in the chat below. Mm, yes. It's easy to, as Odd Log, Odd Log, Odd Log says, it's easy to forget about the silent learners. It's not so much discussed. Mm. That's true. Therefore, we, we have this webinar. Yeah.
Yes, uh, Sinead, you're saying about how to how to under how to understand them, uh, how how best to support them without hassling them, and this is something that we've seen uh, that uh, you know sometimes we're too anxious as teachers and we keep sending messages. Are you okay? Is everything good? Are you how are you, you know you're not? We, we want to see you. We want to see you know. We demand that participation level, and we get worried when they're not doing it. And uh, should we? remind or should we leave them alone how do we t tackle this yeah jenny why are we talking about silent learners as if they are a problem i hope that's not for the 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 the, what the the impression we're trying to give here i think we need to recognize there is a power there and it needs to be they need to be empowered they need to be brought in but in the right way and sometimes and the, the power problem, need to be used sometimes the problem is us the noisy ones Sometimes we need to be quieter. We can learn a lot. Yes, everyone needs to be encouraged. They need to be able to grow in their own way, Ebba. That's great. Yeah. Shall we? Okay. Lots Thank you. And lots of ideas there. So anything, any yeah, comments, of, Francisca? Just go on. Just go on in the chat. We go on uh, with yep. the next uh, slide. Yep. Keep on coming. Your input is appreciated, of course. We will try to put all this together later and all your comments will be sort of going through and trying to make some sense and summarizing it. So a little bit of context before we continue. You're, you're welcome to keep chatting and if Francisca sees anything in the chat, you're welcome to comment while I'm talking away. Uh, one bit of background towards this is a project. It's a Nordic Nord Plus project, which uh, myself and some people in this room at the moment, uh, Torhild and uh, uh, Taru is there as well. I'm not sure if Robiarto has come, but uh, we, we are, we're from all the Nordic countries and self-governing territories. So we have one member from each of them, including Åland and the Faroe Islands and Greenland. We have a website called Silent Learners where we try to uh, well we try to sort of share what we've been doing and some ideas and you'll find quite a lot of resources there. We had a tweet chat, an Eden tweet chat last week about Silent Learners, and if you click on the link, the lower link there, you'll go to the Storify version where you can see the entire tweet chat, and there were a lot of interesting ideas came up there. So today it's about group collaboration with adults and we're focusing here because <clears throat> there are many types of silent learners. As you can see here, there, there, are, many, there are many varieties. Uh, what we're focusing on today are those who are silent by nature. Uh, as in Susan Cain's video, The Introverts. We're not, we all can be silent sometimes and we can have problems, we can have, uh, there are all sorts of social issues, but we're focusing on by choice. And what is the problem or is there a problem at all? Uh, group work. When we are working in real life, as they say, when we're working uh, face to face, the silent people are there, we, we can see them and we know they're thinking and maybe it's a little bit easier in a face to face situation. But online, if their camera isn't on, if they're not in the meeting, if they're not actively participating, are they there? Are they interested? Is it boring? Are they lost? Is this too simple for them? Uh, we don't know. And that makes us uneasy. So, how to recognize silent learners, the natural ones? And what are the needs? And how do we empower them in a group process? How do we get them involved? Because that is the, that's the, what we want to discuss today, that we want to get some ideas from you and share off some of our ideas. One thing we just, a little caveat here, none of us are experts. None of us three are super researchers who have got lots and lots of evidence and studies and so on. We're just interested. We're involved in education and teaching. We're curious. We want to raise this issue so that we're not going to be sure. We're sharing experience and ideas just as you are. So no big science here at the moment, but there are some good articles out there which we refer to from the website. So how do we recognize a silent learner? Over to Francisca. 
Okay, thank you, Alistair. Yes, I will take over. My English is not so good, but I hope you understand. And otherwise, you can always ask me in the chat. Thank you. We are going to do an interview with Jan Willem, our special silent learner of today. But first, I want to tell you something about an experience I had um, with uh, two silent learners in my PBL group. Uh, I was joining the Open Network Learning um, project. It's an educational pro project and I was co-facilitating a PBL group. And I want you to tell about this uh, a problem with a group concerning a silent learner and how we solved it. Uh, we met twice a week during three months and after one month problems occur in a group. Three group members were very engaged and working on a group presentation. Another group member, we call her Gina, that's not her real name, of course. She was inactive. She was not participating. And one time Gina was not there and the group started to express their feelings about Gina's attitude and that was not positive. At that moment, my experience in human dynamics was very relevant. I never was a teacher. Uh, 50 years ago, I joined that course on this topic and I learned how to deal with diversity. There was a judgment in the PBL group over group members who were not participating. So I stopped the group and I asked them to pay attention to the group process. I suggested that they maybe were too fast with judging and maybe, maybe they could ask Gina why she did not contribute it. The next time in the online meeting, Gina gave a total analysis of the group process and everyone was astonished by her observations. And from that moment, everything changed. Gina was asked what she needed to collaborate and the group made 10 steps forward. When we reflected on this moment, Gina said, it was hard for me to follow the discussion. Participants were excited and talked a lot due to lacking English skills together with a lack of knowledge about the topic which we discussed. It sometimes made me passive and I did not take responsibility for the task because I couldn't. So that was my experience. Now I want to ask um, Jan Willem, uh, you are a silent learner by nature. Uh, we know each other for a long time and I want to ask you at what age did you discover that you were a silent learner? Well it was in my early 40s that I discovered that I'm a silent learner. Before that, I realized that I'm a silent person, or, or perhaps better said, an introvert person. But 15 years ago, I attended the same course as you did uh, about human dynamics. And there, I learned that an introvert um, it can be a silent learner, but also a very effective learner. And that was very important to me at that time. Yes, great. Thank you. And... Um, um how did you feel when you discovered it? Well, as a matter of fact, I was relieved because I always thought that I wasn't, uh, well, should I say normal. Now I realized that it is quite normal to be a silent learner. Uh, uh, silent learners are uh, a minority, I think. I think that about 20 to 25 percent of the population uh, are silent learners. But I was relieved that yes. it wasn't uh, unusual to uh, to be quiet in, in, in groups, yet participating. Yes, okay. And now I would like to ask the participants, how do you recognize silent learners before we are going further with uh, uh, characteristics and so? Um, so please, will you give, um, will you type your answer in the chat? How do you recognize silent learners? It is difficult, we know, but just try. Thank you for the links in the chat. And maybe uh, the need to notice that uh, we now have a separate chat on the left for this question. Yes. Thank you, Alistair. Yes.
Yeah, it is, it is uh, very common that they don't talk so much, like noisy learners, but there are, are some other characteristics. Lack of eye contact. Their observant. Yes, yes, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Okay, just finish your typing and then we will ask Jan Willem. Um, in webinar it can be difficult, yes. But uh, while online collaboration is going on, uh, we can recognize them, it's for sure. Uh, Jan Willem, can you tell us something about characteristics of the silent learner? Yes, so while doing some speed reading, I recognize a few things in the in the chat. Um, what I would say is that uh, many silent learners are thinkers rather than doers, and they tend to be objective. Um, they need structure in their uh, course. Um, they are not very keen on showing emotions, which does not mean that uh, they have no emotions, emotions because uh, they uh, they have, and they like to uh, to keep the, the 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 total picture, the overview. That's what I would say. Okay, thank you. And um, can you tell us something about uh, your learning process comparing to others? Well, I like to be left alone when learning. Uh, I learn better on my own. Um, the emphasis is on reading for me rather than listening. Of course, the quality of the teacher is important. A very good teacher who can tell uh, interesting stories I like to listen to. But for me, the relearning is in the reading process. That is much more important. Um, also, um, I like to start at the beginning, then move on to the end. I do not like to start in the middle of a process. That is, uh, for me, that is uh, confusing. Um, another thing, when collaborating with other people, um, that should not be a problem. To me, it is no problem, but I like to be prepared. This, when, so, when collaborating uh, without preparation, uh, I tend to get into difficulties. Yes, you learn to work how to collaborate, first preparing and then collaborating, like Susan Kane said in her video. Exactly. Yeah, that's clear. Okay. And um, the next question, what gives you stress? Because that is also very important. Uh, a few things. Um, when people are talking uh, uh, all together at the same time, uh, that's disturbing to me. Um, I need to contemplate, I need to think. And, where, and, and when, when a group is, is, is noisy, uh, I seem to forget myself and I can't think anymore. And that's disturbing. Yes, so a webinar is very great for you. Um, when all the microphones are off, yes, it is. Yes, and therefore you had enough time to prepare yourself for this webinar, so you feel very comfortable at this moment. Yes, at the moment I'm very comfortable, sure. Yes, yes. So no stress today? A little bit stress, not too okay. much. <laughs> Just enough. Great. And uh, how do you behave when you are stressed? So we can recognize the silent learner a little bit better. Because in my PBL group, uh, I recognize uh, the behavior um, of pulling back. That's exactly what I do. Um, um, I tend to leave the group mentally, of course, not physically. That would be rude. Uh, but I can become even more quieter than I am. So I keep listening, but I don't... Uh, participate. Okay, and is your thinking going on or not? Are you angry then or is your thinking going on? Uh, sometimes I can can get irritated, but I I keep thinking, I keep listening. Okay. But no okay. one sees that I'm doing it. Great. So, what difficulties uh, arise when silent learners collaborate in a group? Jan Willem, can you first uh, Tell us your experiences. Well, when I when I keep silence in a group, um, some people um, um, will think that I'm lazy or uh, not willing to participate or even uh, stupid. 
And that annoys me, so one annoyance causes another. And that is not very good for the, the atmosphere in the group. So that's, to me, that's the main problem. Okay. Okay, thank you. And then I would like to ask uh, participants, uh, we're not reacting on, on all the chat uh, comments because there are so many and there's so much information today. So thank you, thank you very much. Uh, after the webinar, we uh, will put all the reports on the website and then we are going to analyze all the tips and you can read them and you can use them. So thank you, thank you. You, thank you. First, um, will you go to the chat on the left side I and uh, maybe you can chat what difficulties arise with collaboration in your groups so we can make a collection of these points from all you. Yeah, there's... Um, yes, Alistair, you want to join in? There's an awful lot of uh, ideas going around. I yes. mean, we, we have, there is this, I mean, of Did course, you the, the, the classic um, is the idea very, of, the, very, of very interesting from the chat. somehow there's something suspicious about these people who are not actively involved and that they're, Maybe. you know, the, the, it's got a negative tw yes. negative tone to it, which is unfortunate because it is, a, it's about a choice. We should be able to learn in our own ways, but uh, Maybe Jan Willem can react on this because uh, do you do you know the word lurking, Jan Willem? I, I, I I'm familiar with the word. Yes, I am. Yeah. And what do you think about it? Well, I read uh, somewhere Alistair uh, uh, writes uh, lurking is such a negative word. Uh, uh, yeah, perhaps it is, but it can also be very useful. We're not doing anything and just contemplating about what's being said or what's what's being read. Uh, that's what I should say about it. Yes. But can I can I react to uh, the, the the chat on the left side? Of course, go yes, ahead. I see one remark uh, by Jan, and I think that's very important. Um, he said he writes because they might be told to be the extroverts in uh, by the extroverts in a group. Um, Susan Kane said that um, our education system is designed for extrovert people and I, sh I think she's very right and I think it would be very useful uh, for us to realize that this is the case. Yes. So, so the introverts um, um, don't get the attention I wonder if this has changed. I mean, we, have a, we have a participation and society so, and a very an sort of self-centered. We, we we're all putting of, our, our, uh, we're projecting uh, ourselves onto social media. Look at me, look at me, look at us. I'm doing things. Um, I think it's become, I have a feeling that it is getting more like that. And in education, we really focus on collaboration, cooperation, activity. And I know many teachers who wonder that we're so busy jumping around and, uh, you know, there's a good, there's a lot of good about jumping around, about uh, looking at different sources, about skim reading and so on. But how often do we really practice deep reading and reflection? And there's this question about how often do we let ourselves become actually bored, especially children, let them be bored. I've read some articles about that and it's quite a fascinating that we need time to get bored as well, silent time. Mm. Yes, and there's also 21st century skills which said that we uh, need to learn more to think clear. And I think that is also part of it. Yeah. Oh. And I also would, say, would like to say that um, collaboration is, is, is very important also to silent learners. It's about the way uh, how you collaborate. That's important. Uh, I, I will, I, I'm not going role. to say, and I don't think that collaboration should be abolished. Uh, on the contrary, it should be learned. 
Yes. And silent learners has to be respected, maybe. A little bit more. Yes? Just, yeah, okay. Is group size a factor for you? Uh, Andy asks um, if group size is a factor. Jan Willem, will you answer um, this question? I, I would make, uh, um, uh, I would distinguish um, a group in which I'm a participant, and then uh, a smaller group might be better. On the other hand, when I act as a teacher, uh, for me it's no problem if there are 10 participants or, or 300. That's no problem. Um, it depends also on um, what kind of uh, assignments the group uh, uh, is, is doing and how the teacher is uh, um, how the teacher helps them. But if he doesn't, uh, if he has no no uh, uh, if, if he doesn't know that a silent learner needs a different approach, well then the silent learner uh, gets lost. Yeah, that's what I experience also in the PBL group. Yep. Some was, and we also someone have was totally lost. Factor, social, and um, sorry, cultural when we asked what do you need, the and then times. she said um, in some, in some cultures, sentences you're that she needed silent, a structure to participate. Sort of, uh, and that was so Asia very clear. In particular, you, you think, think of in general, yeah. there's this, you listen respectfully. Whereas in the West, we tend to make a noise. Yes. Yes. Okay, it stays, it goes on. Thank you for all these contributions. It's amazing. I, I really should take a core speed reading. Yeah. Okay, let's go on. Thank you. And uh, we just um, let it out for some uh, seconds. Um, Jan Willem, which role do you play the best in teams? Because that's another point. If you are collaborating, if you are in a team, uh, which role do you play the best? How can we use your power as an introvert? Well, I, shall, I shall start by saying that I'm not the leader. But I can be the guard of the process the group is going through to keep the group moving, um, to uh, be a mediator when a group members have conflicting opinions. Uh, that's my role uh, and that's what I can do best. Okay, and do you? that's what you like the best also? And that's also what I like the best, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, so that's the role. And then, um, what do you need for learning in groups? When you are collaborating, can you tell us what do you need to play a role or do the best you can? Well, at first, um, I need a clear assignment. Yeah. To begin with. And the other part is that uh, when working in a group, um, it is important that it is acknowledged that the uh, silent learner exists. That the silent learner uh, has his, his or her, of course, uh, place in, in, in the group. Um, what I mean is don't judge, but ask. Ask the silent uh, learner uh, uh, questions, uh, uh, and which gives the opportunity to say something, to think about uh, what, uh, what's happening. Uh, that helps. Yes. And don't don't presume they are lazy and don't presume they are uninterested. But that that is not very motivating uh, to the silent learner. But it is sometimes a little bit difficult in a group because in my PBL group uh, there were some very noisy uh, learners and they were very engaged and very enthusiastic. And then there was someone who was not participating and there were, were emotions involved. So it was very difficult to say now stop and the emotions um, put them out of the group now and just look to the group process what is going on and what is needed now to uh, let join um, everyone. Yeah, so so emotion so is sometimes a problem. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you gave attention uh, to the one who was excluded and uh, yes. this person was excluded because of the reasons we just uh, discussed. Yes. Okay, thank you. I think it is clear. Um, and then now the next round. Um, 
We will ask you, are you a silent learner by nature or a noisy learner? So this is to you, uh, all the participants. And um, now we have this slide. And I would like to ask you um, to change your chat color. So we know who is a silent learner and who is not. So what you have to do now is now action. It's um, go to the chat on the right side and then go to these little stripes. Go to my chat color and change it. If you are a silent learner, make it green. If you are a noisy learner like me, make it orange. And if you are something in between, make it blue. So just try it and then you, I will ask you a question. Yes, yes, yes. So, yes, please tell us what sort of learner you are. So we know how much silent learners we have, how much noisy learners will we have, and how much something in between learners we have. There's a lot of gr green people, green silent learners. That's very nice. Yes, great. A lot of blue ones. Maybe you didn't identify yourself totally. I don't know. I think everyone is in between because if you are a developed silent learner, you are not so silent anymore. And if you are a noisy person, noisy learner, and you are developed, you can shut your mouth sometimes. Yeah, there's a, a brown one. So there's also something in between, I think. Now, this will work. Yes? OK, this is working. Then we go on with uh, the needs of the silent learner. And how are we doing this? Uh, we are using some scenarios from interview from Taru Kekkonen with silent learners. Thank you, Taru. You are now on the bus. Uh, and we would like to talk a little bit to you, but uh, it's not you are not able to. So we thank you very much for these interviews. And they are also on the silent learners blog. Um, and what we are going to do is that we have some scenarios. We have a big chat pod, and I will make it a little bit smaller because then you can stay chatting. Um, on the left pod, uh, read this scenario and read the question beneath in pink, and then answer this question. So then you are rehearse. You are going to rehearse uh, your role as a teacher when you're now knowing a little bit more about silent learners. And then you can inspire each other. Thank you. Willem, will you come back on the webcam so you can react later on on this? Yes, I will.
Yes, okay, thank you. Uh, you're very busy at this moment. Uh, Jan Willem, what do you think? Someone said, uh, Lana said, make a group with only silent learners. What do you think about this? It might get very silent. Yeah. <laughs> yes. um, I, I wouldn't do, uh, I think I, I wouldn't like uh, uh, being a silent learner. Um, I'm not opposed to noisy learners. Uh, I think that the conditions should be created uh, to to uh, make all, all, all of them par uh, comfortable. And for, my, for me, it means that uh, the teacher should give uh, clear assignments. Uh, perhaps that is the most uh, important part. And, and uh, uh, questions, uh, questions should be asked. I can see this from, from the chat. From, from addressing uh, assignment learner directly is not always uh, the right way. It, 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 it may uh, disturb the silent learner. But when you create a group and you instruct the, the participants to ask uh, questions to one another, I think it uh, could help. Yes, and I have a, a maybe a little bit personal question. When you uh, knew you were a silent learner, so when you were uh, in your early 40s, then you knew it was normal. From then on, was it easier to collaborate when you knew that you were normal but just different? Yes, it was easier because um, uh, um, before I sometimes even felt guilty by not saying so much. And then uh, when I realized that it, 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 it could be very normal not to say uh, a lot of things, um, it, it, it made it easier for me. Okay, okay, thank you. Then we go on to the next one. Please, uh, dear participants, please react on this scenario. Someone is uh, talking about the OPERA model. It proposes that you just work in a pair in the beginning. That's a great idea. Okay, you can go on writing. Um, Jan Willem, what would you say to encourage this silent learner who said this? No, I'm not sure if you can do much about it. Um, myself, I am also one who does not have the need to, to be loudly in, uh, in the group. Um, perhaps that's just the way people are. Um, the only thing you can do is, is, is make them feel comfortable in this group. Uh, yeah. Make it safe to give answers that may be incorrect. Uh, um, give them room. And learn the others to listen. Because Susan Cain said in her video, dare to be a, a, a silent, dare to be uh, not noisy. What did you say? I forgot it. Uh, dare to be um, not so loud. Yes, some some people in the group they they, they are talking all the time, and and uh, a teacher should be able to silence uh, them uh, a little, to to make uh, a space for the other ones. Yes, and get used to it that people uh, want to uh, finish their sentences. I think that is uh, something very basic of collaboration. Listen to each other. And creating space, yes, space and patience for the noisy learners, I think. Okay, it's going the right direction. The next um, topic, the next scenario, I hate spontaneous discussions because I don't know what appropriate is to say. What would you ask the group members of the silent learner? What would you say to them? So please, will you give your answer in the chat and we make the reports of this of course and it's very interesting when you are using your colors
Indeed, there is no wrong answer. There are no wrong answers. I understand you. Yes. Take your time. Yes. Great. Jan Willem, what do you think about this? What would you ask group members to say? Giving a wrong answer when learning um, can be a problem to a silent learner. And uh, giving a wrong answer uh, should not be a problem because it's part of learning. And you can help the silent learner but, uh, by um, making him accept that um, you can say anything in the safe environment of a learning group and that giving a wrong answer is, is not a problem. And, and we always say that you can learn from your mistakes and that's what you're doing when learning. So uh, create safety to, to, to give wrong answers. Yes, and I think also uh, stop the group when the culture uh, uh, is getting to the wrong dire direction and stop the group and talk about the group process if um, people s s judge about each other uh, on so what they judging, say. Uh, when learning, people shouldn't judge e each other. They should uh, uh, talk about the answers and not the person. And when being silent, um, uh, people tend to, to talk about uh, the person and not about what he is saying or not saying. Yes, but sometimes when emotions are involved and there are difficulties between different kinds of learners, it could be a little bit difficult, we remark. Yes, and, and in, 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 when this happens, when too much emotions become involved, it's the role of the uh, teacher to act as a moderator, to... to things down and bring it back to bring it back into perspective yes great okay people are thinking people are writing not all learning is intellectual that's that is true go on and put your thoughts in the chat we will wait a little bit because it is very interesting and this is a kind of a crowdsourcing webinar we don't know everything so we want all of your ideas and put it together. And some people find the chat very stressful because uh, that's happening a lot and it is stressful. Um, but it's also very valuable and I think for silent learners uh, it's not easy to think, it's like the tweet chat but um, yes, we uh, ab uh, appreciate your contribution and it's uh, for everyone later on. I think um, how do we help everyone to think deeper with less spontaneous I think that's a very interesting question. Is it a skill? Is it a habit? Is it behavior? How do we help everyone to think deeper with less spontaneous, uh, with being less spontaneous? Uh, Jan Willem, what do you think about this? Being less spontaneous? Um, I'm not sure what you mean now. Um, uh, Lotta said, how do we help every f everyone, everyone in the group, I think, to think deeper? Well, um, I might say... There's just people who think first and then speak. And there are people who first speak and think then, or don't think at all. That's also possible. Um, when these two people get together, you get problems. Because one is too, too spontaneous, and the other uh, perhaps not, not enough uh, spontaneous. 
Um, it's the task of the leader, of the teacher, or the chairperson to uh, uh, guard this process and ensure that everyone can say what uh, what 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 is useful, what is, what is uh, not useful is not the right word, but uh, what mm -hmm. could contribute to uh, a good discussion. Yes. So you talk for, uh, in the beginning about a, a clear assignment. Uh, uh, um, clear assignment, uh, some space, listening to each other, and then I think we will come um, to the next, um, no, not the next chapter. We will talk to it later on what is uh, needed for empowering the silent learner. So I think we're now going further uh, to the next scenario. Uh, maybe um, you could think about this. It is easier to join an online discussion because the structure is more clear, said one silent learner. And now I would like to ask you, um, how do you think about this? Marcus want, wanted a more structured chat. <laughs> yes. Um, there are group support systems. Uh, you can work with um, more than 100 people. And then you have a structured chat, Marcus. It's possible, technically. Okay, Jan Willem, um, what do you think about online discussions? Well, for me, uh, a structured discussion is always better. But, um, and online, it is easier to, to uh, structure the, the discussion. That's right, but in, in, in real life, and especially nowadays, for me, a uh, discussion in real life is, is not a problem any longer. Um, Why? Because I now know uh, uh, what kind of uh, learner I am and how I can do my best contribution to the discussion. And sometimes this is being silent and listening carefully to what's being said, then think of what I'm going to say and then say it. Mm -hmm. And in the past, uh, the last part uh, uh, didn't come. And now it does. I'm not afraid any longer of, of saying what I need to say. Yes. Yes, yes, you are a developed silent learner, I think. Uh, great. Um, so now we come to the chapter how to empower power the silent learner in group context because we all want to understand the silent learner by nature and we all yep. Uh, um, want the group I to... Uh, again, conf it's been a fantastic... The, the chat, it, I must admit, I mean, it, I think we all find a chat that's going at the speed that this is going with, uh, I think we are about 80 people involved here. So when there are so many people making contributions like this, it does get pretty confusing in there. But you can go back in the recording and read it slowly. So you can do that. That's the advantage of an online situation. Um, as we've said, we've talked about creating awareness of diversity. Um, we need to, I think we need to recognize that uh, you don't have to be participating loudly to be learning, and we need to recognize different roles here. Um, I think we, we, we need to we need to think more about those who want to be a little quieter. There are advantages of lots of group work and discussion and brainstorming, but it's it shouldn't be all the time. And we need to get that balance. It's come out on the chat that we need to get more, we need to create space for slightly more reflective act activities. 
finding ways of letting the uh, silent learner maybe take a, 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 an important role. As you found, Francisca, with your group when you were talking about uh, the, that problem, that you allowed the, the silent learner to use their strengths. That was the silent learner produced an analysis of the group process and the group was amazed because this person had, had actually understood what was going on and suddenly presented the thing to them and the, oh, you know, maybe we should find tasks where the, the more silent people can maybe do some analysis work, fact finding, doing the desktop research that will help the group process, but not insisting that they're involved in the, the chaotic brainstorming and activity that can go on in the group so that everyone can contribute but in different ways and making sure that the the noisy learners you were talking about actually are also they have to they have to learn to be quiet uh, heather was saying in the chat there that maybe we should have a webinar about noisy learners um, i don't think it's it's not a binary problem it's not a noisy silent thing either i think it's very much about learning to adapt and learning to be quiet learning to be reflective learning to be contributive there are we all have those strengths so really uh <clears throat> as we're beginning to round off here uh, how can we encourage group members to use the strengths of the silent learner are there any further ideas coming up on that because that really is the the key how do we how do we lift them Yeah, diff using different media, as Eva says here. I mean, we all we often have this. Uh, there has been a bit of a tyranny in education on written language. Now it's spoken, but we expect everyone to hand in written assignments. But lots of educators are now saying, "Well, why don't you hand in a video assignment?" And that can require just as much research and uh, depth and learning as a written assignment why not audio why not using art using representation there are different ways of presenting something I've seen these incredible artists that come to conferences who can actually draw spontaneously fantastic drawn diagrams that capture the essence of a keynote speech or the entire conference in one wonderful mural. Now that is high skilled work, just as much as writing a report. So really making, don't judge, ask questions as you said Jan Willem. And we changed again, Francisca, how to impor how, I think the answers were coming in already, actually, but uh, we we clean the board and uh, let's see what we can. Okay, yeah, yeah, yes, yes, okay, yeah. I go back. Sorry, and yes, because uh, then I recommend all together here. I think really the. Okay. The, this and sort of session, you've got, to, going to, you've the got to look at the recording to make sense. So of it. please you write can, down uh, everything you, can, you want you can stop it. to say you can't or stop write us here. Just now. We just keep going. Because this but, is uh, really when important. You can stop it and read to yourself. I think awareness is very important here. Uh, to be aware that there are different kind of uh, yeah, people. Mats it's is about saying, uh, the knowledge of diversity. Think and, and about, write suggestions at the beginning. I think it's, it's focusing at the if beginning on how, do, that, how are we going to work then, as a group? Um, uh, how do we like to work as a group? One. Maybe to work on uh, routines like that. And uh, the role of the teacher is so important here and we can see that uh, the, the, the teacher's role is, is structuring this and enabling.
that happens. I've tried, yeah. And sometimes being silent. It is difficult in this role when you are visible like this. Even in a talking. webinar? Because people, it's a little bit worrying if it's all silent. But well, Everyone's reading or writing. Eh? It's like the television. It's never silent. Yeah. We I have to get so. used to it. Shall we go to uh, the end, Alistair? And then we have time enough uh, okay. after the webinar uh, to go on with this. Uh, we collect everything yep. and then uh, if you want to talk, so it's possible. We are coming to the end of our time. Uh, it's uh, four minutes till four o'clock here in Sweden anyway and in the Netherlands. Uh, we thank you so okay. much. It's we been a great experience. I hope it has been for um, you. It's not been too chaotic. And as I said, you'll all get the link and you can uh, you can read it at your leisure. We propose that you can uh, hang around if you want and we'll chatter away. We'll open the microphones if you want to speak so that uh, but when after we turn the uh, recording off, then we're off the record. And if you want to stay, you can. Otherwise, uh, enjoy the rest of the day and thank you for attending. Please on the bottom left, uh, ideas about the webinar. Was it valuable? What was valuable about it uh, or not? And uh, just give us some quick feedback there. And on behalf of the, uh, well, they're not really sponsors. It's a, it's not a, it's not a financial operation. But uh, from NVL and ITHU and Eden and X Webinar, then we thank everybody for this. We will have uh, future webinars in all these networks, and they will all be. Uh, advertised on their respective websites. One thing I can say is that on the 8th, 19th of April, uh, I'll be back with new uh, friends and we'll be discussing the question of using MOOCs for helping refugees uh, get integrated into higher education and into the labour market. And that's a very different topic. And uh, we'll be investigating that on the 19th of April. More information on the various websites. So thank you very much. Francisca, Jan Willem, final words to sum up? And this is the website. Yeah, thank you for uh, thank you all participants for all the contributions, and we will have a look to it after the webinar, of course, and we will think it over. And uh, I think that is very well, very valuable for us. Um, of course, I'm speaking before Jan Willem, so sorry. Uh, Jan Willem, would you like to give a last uh, 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 comment on this? I, I certainly would like to uh, to say something. Um um, I've read a lot of interesting contributions uh, which uh, can deepen my view on the subject and I was very happy to uh, to say something about this subject because um, um, it is too little discussed and perhaps we've made a start uh, uh, on discussing it now. It would help a lot of people, silent learners, but also others. Thank you for your great contribution, Jan Willem, because when Alistair and I... Okay, I will now uh, close. Webinar,